So I'm Monica Solanki. I have a PhD in computer science and I work as a research fellow at the Knowledge Based, uh, Knowledge -based Engineering Lab. Uh, just across the road at Birmingham City University. I'm working on a project uh, which is an interact project, it's NALGI. And uh, the project is about producing, well, the scientists are looking at producing energy from algae. How viable it is, is something that I'm not going to comment on because I don't have that much background knowledge of the domain. Uh, but this is what the project essentially is all about, uh, producing energy from algae. And how do you think that, the work you're doing, relates to this question about how we're going to feed Birmingham in 2050? What do you see as the connection? Well, traditionally, algae has been used as a food source. So, for example, you know, sushi as such. I am a vegetarian. I don't eat meat, fish, anything. So, But sushi essentially has got a lot of seaweed, and seaweed is an algae. And apparently, uh, spirulina, which is a form of algae, is supposed to be the most nutritious food on the planet. So an algae is not... From what I've heard, it's not too difficult to grow. So, you know, it could be, well, in some sense, it could be a source of protein, if you think about it. And it could be easily grown in a cultivated environment. It could be grown in cities. So I had uh, Ed asking me, uh, Ed from Sustaination asking me, I mean, he was quite interested in, you know, if algae could be a consumer of human manure, so then it could be grown in large numbers from the waste which cities produce. So, and it's, it is being used in pharmaceutical products and food products, Algae is being conventionally used, so... One of the questions you were mm. just talking about, I know the conversation is still going on in there, but you were yeah. just talking about was, uh, how do you think technology, IT, whatever you want to call it, the semantic yeah. web, will influence and shape how we feed this city in 2050? What, I mean, do you have thoughts about that? What, what were you sharing with your table? Yeah, the thing, I mean, a semantic web brings several things, and one of the things that it brings is sharing of knowledge. Right? And this sharing of knowledge across the complete supply network or supply web, if you like, is going to be a very powerful tool. Because if people are informed, if people who are working at the grassroots levels, if they are informed about what consumers actually need, they would be able to tailor their produce accordingly. So, of course, because of the nature of the technologies that are being used in Semantic Web, it the, uh, the, the data that is out there becomes machine understandable, but more importantly, it becomes shareable. And I, th I think this sharing, this notion of sharing information is what can make a very big difference. But at the moment, businesses yeah. capture and keep information, don't they? Or they sell it. And I mean, do you mean sharing in any sense or do you mean actually the fact that this information really needs to be much freer than it is now? It, is, it has to be. I mean, within, if you are sharing information within a closed enterprise, it benefits only the people who are out there to make money or who, you know, who have companies set up to make money out of the whole business. But sharing, when I, when I talk about sharing, I mean it's open data. So data is available for everyone to use in a uniform way. So then there is no sort of, you know, there's no demarcating line that this is useful only for a certain class of people or, you know, a certain group of communities. And actually, this isn't really what I was expecting to talk to you about, although obviously we'd end up talking about this. So. In this business of it being open data, how do we go from your Tesco club card being a very, very vital piece of commercial, uh, com commercial commercially incredibly va valuable mm -hmm. to that information in some shape or form being open data? So the Tesco club card? Yes, I mean, uh, really what I'm saying is you're, 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 you're describing a world where we would need to share this data openly, it would just need to be put out there. Um, but at the moment, that information is commercially incredibly important to organisations like Tesco, supermarkets, other people. Can you see how you can get to the point where they would be sharing this information? So in the sense that uh, Tesco basically monitors what people shop yeah. and what, what what the graph looks like, what the statistics look like week on a week on a week basis, they see which produ products are being consumed. Yeah. And I think, well, and what would happen if Tesco was to make that data available openly? Or more importantly, how could we persuade them to do that if that's so critically important to the future of how we feed ourselves? Well, uh, one, one scenario that I see is that if Tesco were to open their data and if they would invite people to contribute, so it's not just a one-way process, you see. You open up your data and you invite people to write to that data. So it's not just read only, it's read and write. So people contribute that, you know, what would you like to shop next week? Or, you know, what, do you, what are the things you would like to cook next week? And people contribute and then Tesco gets an idea and then Tesco can prepare itself in some sense. Okay. And do you think, do you think though, that we're going to be heading to a world where data is going to become more open or more controlled? 
Which do you, which instincts do you think are going to prevail? Well, I mean, I see a world where data will be open, but how trustworthy that data is is a question. I mean, we don't want just data. We want good data. We want data which is true, which is relevant to the current scenario. And we do, I mean, of course, uh, when you talk about opening up data and putting up all the data out there, you can have all sorts of data which is not useful, really, rubbish data. But we are not after that. We are after good data, good data with a certain degree of provenance. So when Tesco opens up its data, there is some sort of a backing behind it. And that is the trust, people would trust data opened up by Tesco. This is because of the long-standing reputation it has in the market otherwise. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs>